Washington State University. Go Cougs! Hello and welcome back to the course on statistical inference. In module two, we will be looking at several different classification methods in order to do statistical inference. In this first part, we'll be looking at the nearest neighbors classifier. Before we start into nearest neighbor, let's just give an overview of the different classification methods we'll be looking at in the parts of this module. After nearest neighbors, we'll be looking at naive bays, then we'll look at decision trees, followed by neural networks, and then lastly, ensemble methods, which are methods that use several different classifiers together into one big classifier. But in this part, we'll be focusing on the nearest neighbors classifier. So in general, when we're doing classification, we are uh, wanting to classify a new vector. So we've received a new feature vector x, and we want to predict its class, its class value. <clears throat> For nearest neighbors, the way we do this is we first find some close neighbors to x in our feature space. Specifically, uh, we define as a parameter the k, or the number of neighbors that we choose. And then once we've identified those neighbors, we then look at the majority class among those neighbors. And whatever the majority class is, that's our prediction. So in this picture, you see that uh, we have, we've already seen several uh, examples of work and play. So the uh, blue dots are uh, in previous examples we've seen for play, red dots for the activity work. So we receive this new uh, feature vector, a new piece of data X, and we want to know is this, should we classify that as work or play? So if the k is 3, in other words, we want to look at the three nearest neighbors, uh, we'd see that there are uh, two examples of work and one example of play that are the three nearest neighbors. So if k were 3, then we would predict that the activity was work. However, if we chose k equal to 5, we see that it encompasses three or two additional examples, uh, both of which are play. And so if we use k equals 5, now play is in the majority, and we would predict play. <clears throat> so that's essentially how nearest neighbors work. You essentially memorize the data that you have, and then when you receive a new example to classify, you find the nearest neighbors and predict their majority class. So let's see how this is done inside the scikit-learn library. Um, before we jump into the code, I just want to talk about a few preliminaries. Uh, one of the modules that's used by Scikit-Learn is the Num NumPy package, which is a numeric processing package or module uh, that uh, does a really good job with arrays, and all of the data we're dealing with is essentially multidimensional arrays. So we'll be using NumPy and some of the more advanced methods for manipulating arrays. It'll make our, our code a lot cleaner. Also, we will be using the scikit-learns preprocessing package and our module. And in that module, uh, there are several ways to preprocess the data to uh, get it in a little better shape for doing classification. Specifically for nearest neighbor, we'll be using the scaling method and what this does is it basically tries to make all of the different dimensions have about the same variance. In nearest neighbor, if you have one dimension that's very large, uh, very large variance, and another dimension that's very small, then the larger dimension will tend to dominate all of the distance calculations when you're calculating what's nearest. And so uh, the scaling uh, basically removes that artifacts so that all of the dimensions contribute equally to computing what's nearest. And finally, in the uh, metrics package of scikit-learn, we'll be using the accuracy score um, 
So when we want to determine how well our classifier is doing, one way to do that is to compute the accuracy. In other words, of the uh, examples that we have, how many does it correctly classify? So we'll be using that as well. All right, so let's take a look at the code. <clears throat> so in your uh, materials for the course, you should have this nearest neighbors Python program. In all of the uh, classification methods for this course, uh, they follow kind of the same comment at the top. Specifically, uh, they'll give a reference to the scikit-learn documentation for where you can find out more about the classification method. <clears throat> so uh, first off, we again uh, import our read data. We've seen that before, so we can read in our sensor data. As I mentioned, we'll be using the NumPy package and we'll rename that as NP, which is fairly common. We're also going to want to plot um, the results of our nearest neighbor classifier, so we'll be using matplotlib for that. Uh, if I just jump ahead a couple of slides, you'll see where we're headed. Uh, we're basically trying to output a, uh, a picture of the decision surface, essentially. In other words, uh, any point that were to fall into this red region is going to be classified as work. Any point that falls into the blue region would be classified as play. So we want to be able to visualize that. And so we'll be using matplotlib to do that. Finally, uh, we import several uh, modules from the scikit-learn. Of course, the neighbors module contains the nearest neighbor classifier. The preprocessing module contains that scale method. And then the metrics package contains the method for computing the accuracy of our predictions. Also, <clears throat> almost all of the classification methods have an, a number of parameters that you can set. They all typically have default values, so you don't have to set them. But for nearest neighbor, of course, the main parameter is the number of neighbors. And so we're uh, actually going to provide a way to set that. Um, so for now, we'll set it to 3. I believe the default is 5. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll try it out for 3. And of course, you can change that and play with different values. <coughs> Okay, so first off, we'll read in our sensor data, and this is uh, similar to what we've seen before. In this case, we're just going to look at two dimensions. We're going to look at the X and Y acceleration values. So those will be loaded into X. So X will be a uh, contain, it'll be an array where each element of the array R is a pair of the X and Y acceleration values. Y will contain the correct uh, classes for all of those examples. Uh, since scikit-learn works exclusively with numbers, we have to convert our activities from strings to numbers. So if the classes work, we'll uh, give that a zero. If it's play, then we'll give it a one. So when we're done, we have all of our data in X, all of our classes in Y. And here we're converting those to NumPy arrays. And we're going to go ahead and scale our our data so that all of the dimensions have about the same variance. <clears throat> Next, we actually uh, will execute the classifier. We first create uh, an instance of the k-neighbors classifier, and we pass in the number of neighbors that we want. And then we fit that classifier to the data. So you pass in the x, the actual data, and y, the classes for the data. And this is where most of the work is going on, where it's actually uh, fitting the, the classification method to the data. Finally, we then want to see how well the classifier does. So we use the predict method of the classifier. In this case, we're just going to check the accuracy on the actual data we use to train it or to fit. Uh, so that's x. <clears throat> so it should do pretty well. If it's already seen that data and it's fit the classifier to that data, then the accuracy should be pretty good on that data. So we pass in X, our, our original data, and then Z is going to be a, uh, an array of the classifications. So they're going to be either 0 or 1 based on whether it thinks it's work or play. 
And then finally, we uh, use the accuracy score method of the metrics package to compute the accuracy between Y, which is our uh, actual class values, and Z, which are the predicted class values. And so that will actually compute an accuracy score. Of course, if it's perfect, it'll be 1. Uh, if it's, uh, say, random, it'll be 0.5. Um, and then we'll print out that value so we can see what the accuracy is. So this last piece of the uh, Python code is code that I uh, copied mostly and modified from the scikit-learn site that specifically is designed to uh, visualize the decision surfaces of the classifier. I'm not going to go through this in a lot of detail, but uh, let me jump ahead again to the picture. So basically what this code is doing is it's, it's computing a very fine mesh grid across this region, so a bunch of points. And then for each of those points, it classifies it using the nearest neighbor classifier as to whether it's work or play. And if it's uh, work, then it will uh, put a little red box in, in that grid point. If it's play, it'll put a blue box in that grid point. And so it does this over the entire grid surface. And so the result is that the regions that would be classified as work will have this red color. The regions classified as play will be blue. So you can kind of see here's all of our work uh, data clustered together here so that you know, a point in here, when we get its three nearest neighbors, they're going to be taken from this grid. Whereas a point out here, its three nearest neighbors will be taken from the play uh, group and therefore classified as play. So that's what this code is doing. Um, so this is our kind of the size of our grid, the precision of it, you know, fairly low. Here are the colors we'll use for the uh, regions and for the points. <clears throat> and then uh, this code here generates the mesh grid over the entire size of our data set. Then we predict each of those points using the same classifier that we just learned. And then we uh, do a little manipulation to get the data back into the right shape, you know, a two-dimensional array. Then we apply the colors uh, for the regions and then we plot the points and set the limits on the axes, add a title, and then finally show the plot. So again, a lot going on there that you don't really need to worry about the details, uh, but the result is a nice plot that lets us see what's going on. <clears throat> okay, so uh, to run this code, uh, we would just type Python and then the name of the program. It should output an accuracy for us and also pop up a, a picture of the region. So let me get out of the notes here and get into the terminal window. So this is the uh, source directory that has all of the different code that we'll be using in this course. Uh, we'll be specifically interested in uh, the nearest neighbors software. It's the same code that you saw in the notes. So let's run that. So first we see the accuracy. So it gets about 93% of the of our examples right. Again, there's 56 examples uh, that we're using. And now it's working on the, uh, the mesh grid. It's a, a pretty fine grid, so it's going to take a while to compute all of those uh, regions. So there's our visualization. Let me make it a little bigger. Pretty much anything you do with this is going to take a while because it has a lot of points to compute. There we go. <clears throat> and then I'm going to zoom in. Once it's done thinking, I'm going to, there we go. I'm going to click on this zoom to rectangle and take a closer look at region that has our 
work area. Again, it takes a little while, but there we go. So there you can see that the region around these red points, of course, anything close to those is going to be classified as work. Anything outside of those uh, sufficient distance is going to be classified as play. All right, so that's the nearest neighbors classifier. Again, there's a lot of parameters you can play with, and um, but our, our main goal is to be able to learn a classifier so we can perform statistical inference and be able to classify new points and determine whether the person's activity is work or play. <clears throat> so that's uh, the end of our treatment of nearest neighbors. In the next part, we'll be looking at another classification method called Naive Bayes. <laughs>